What category is this molecule in? I think this is the first example that we've done where there was a substituent on the ring. Here we have a methyl substituent on the ring. Uh, how does that affect us? How does that change our answer? And the answer is it basically has no effect. All we care about is the number of pi electrons in the ring. All we care about is the number of pi electrons in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals in the conjugated ring. We really don't care what's happening up here in the substituent. We can basically ignore that. Like an unsubstituted benzene, this has six pi electrons. So it's aromatic. The lesson again is that when we're counting the pi electrons, all we care about is the number of electrons in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals in the ring. We don't care about what's happening on the substituents outside the ring. What category is this molecule in? Well, let's count the pi electrons in the ring. Two electrons in this pi bond, two electrons in this pi bond. Since this is a carb anion, we know it also has a lone pair, and it's going to put a lone pair, to put the lone pair in its p orbital, so the lone pair here also counts as pi electrons. So that gives us six pi electrons. There are six pi electrons in the ring. Now, what about these pi electrons? Because we have a pi bond over here, there are also some more pi electrons in this substituent. Well, we already talked about the principle in the very last problem. We only need to count the pi electrons that are in the ring. We only are counting the electrons in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals in the ring. We don't count the two pi electrons over here. So we have six pi electrons, and the ring is aromatic. We only count the pi electrons in the ring. If there's any pi electrons on substituents outside the ring, we don't count them when we're trying to figure out whether the molecule satisfies Heckel's rule. Try this problem. introduces a new difficulty. In a previous problem, we said that we should only be counting the pi electrons that are in the ring, the pi electrons in the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals in the ring. But how should we treat the pi electrons in this pi bond with the oxygen? Um, should we treat that uh, these pi electrons as being in the ring or outside the ring? Uh, maybe it's not really clear uh, because the pi bond is being shared between the oxygen and this carbon. Uh, the, these electrons are being shared between the oxygen, which is outside of the ring, and the carbon, which is inside of the ring. So should we treat the pi electrons as being in the ring or outside of the ring? Well, the solution to that is to draw another resonance form where the electrons are not being shared. So let's try drawing another resonance form where the electrons are not shared. From the electron pushing arrow, you can see that we took the pi electrons and pushed them up to this oxygen. That gives the oxygen a negative formal charge, and since the carbon lost the electrons, it ends up with a positive formal charge. Well, now, in this picture, it's clear that those pi electrons are not part of the ring. In this picture, the electrons are not being shared. They're clearly on the oxygen and not part of the ring. So now we can count the pi electrons that clearly are part of the ring in the carbon-carbon pi bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six. That gives us six 
pi electrons. Six pi electrons, which makes the molecule aromatic. Now, if you're thinking critically while you're watching these videos, um, there should definitely be a question in your mind. And the question should be, how did we know to push the electrons up to the oxygen? Why didn't we push the electrons down to the carbon? That would be legal as well. Um, why is it that we're pushing the electrons up to the oxygen? How did we know that we should not focus on the resonance form where the electrons get pushed down to the carbon? Well, there's really two different ways to know that that is not a reasonable resonance form. Uh, the first is, remember, the molecule wants to be aromatic. Well, if we push the electrons up to the oxygen, then the molecule will be aromatic. Uh, but you can see that if we had pushed these electrons down to the carbon, then the molecule would have ended up being anti-aromatic, because then it would have had eight pi electrons. So which resonance form is going to get greater weight? Which is the more important resonance form? Well, clearly the more stable resonance form is going to be the major contributor, and the more stable resonance form is going to be the one where we push the electrons up to the oxygen, which makes the ring aromatic. So one way we knew which way to push the oxygen, which way to push the electrons, was we wanted to do uh, focus on the resonance form that allowed the molecule to be aromatic. Uh, the other thing you can look at is that, in general, when you are moving a pi bond in a resonance form, uh, when you're changing a pi bond into a lone pair, um, generally speaking, you want to push the pi bond onto the more electronegative atom. Uh, this is a basic principle for resonance. Uh, the more stable resonance contributor is usually the one where we push the electrons onto the atom that wants the electrons more. Now, in this picture, the oxygen ended up negative and the carbon ended up positive. Well, that's a relatively stable picture because we know that oxygen wants electrons more than carbon does. If we had tried pushing the electrons down to the carbon, well, then we would have got an unstable pattern with a positive charge on the oxygen and a negative charge on the carbon. So there's two ways to see that the most reasonable resonance form is the one that pushes the electrons up to the oxygen. First of all, that allowed the molecule to be aromatic, and also that allowed us to push the electrons towards the more electronegative atom, which is generally going to be the more stable uh, resonance form and the more important resonance contributor. Okay, so now we've seen what to do when we have a pi bond kind of, so to speak, sticking out from the ring. If you've got a pi bond um, between the ring and a substituent on the ring, you have to try to draw a reasonable resonance form um, so that the electrons are clearly in the ring or clearly out of the ring. Um, and then you can decide based on that um, how many pi electrons there are in the ring. Now, how do you know what direction to push the pi electrons in? Well, you're generally going to favor um, resonance forms that push um, the pi electrons onto the more electronegative atom. Let's try this problem. Now, notice that uh, in order to solve this problem, besides looking at the structure of this molecule, you have to notice that it is a di-anion. This has a net negative two charge overall, which means that besides the electrons that we're already showing in this picture, there's two more electrons that are not being shown. pi bonds do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pi bonds, which would give us 18 pi electrons in the pi bonds. There's 18 pi electrons if you just count the pi bonds, uh, but we know that there's an extra two electrons that haven't been shown here, because we know this has a negative two charge overall. So besides the 18 pi electrons in the pi bonds that you can see, there's an extra two pi electrons. So overall, this molecule has 20 pi electrons. 20 pi electrons would put it into the list for anti-aromatic. We know that 16 is anti-aromatic. Uh, and then if you added uh, four more, you would get the next element in this list, which is 20. Remember that always the way that you find the next element in each of these lists is to take the previous element and add four. So 20 pi electrons would make the molecule anti-aromatic. 